Modeling with equations is like using math to describe and solve real-world problems. We use symbols and numbers to represent different aspects of a situation, and then we create equations that express how those aspects relate to each other. By solving these equations, we can make predictions and find solutions to various problems in science, engineering, economics, and more. It's a powerful tool that helps us understand and tackle a wide range of challenges in the world around us. Before we write a model with an equation, let's take a look at a model using a table. Here, Judy starts 300 feet due south of the park and walks directly toward the park at a constant speed of 5.4 feet per second. And our job is to complete the table here. Now we're told that Judy starts 300 feet from the park. So after zero seconds of walking, she will be 300 feet from the park. Now every second, she walks 5.4 feet per second toward the park. So she's getting closer to the park, so this distance is going to get smaller. So with each second, we're going to subtract 5.4. Three hundred minus five point four, that's two hundred ninety four point six. We subtract five point four again and get two hundred eighty nine point two. And subtract it one more time and we get two hundred eighty three point eight. Even though we're done filling out the table, let's take a moment just think about how this situation relates to an equation. In particular, we're going to use the slope intercept form of a linear equation y equals mx plus b. Now, in this equation, the slope, m, that is the rate of change. So that's explaining how quickly something is changing. And the b, well, that's the y-intercept, which is the starting point. Because this is what y equals when x is 0. It's also the y-intercept. So in this case, well, our rate of change is negative 5.4, because that's how much closer she's getting to the park each second. So it's negative 5.4 times the number of seconds, plus 300, our starting point. So this equation is going to subtract 5.4 for every second that she walks. Let's do some more modeling with equations. The Canadian Census Agency predicted that the population of Alberta would be about 17 million in 2010, and increase by 3 million per year until 2030. Write an equation in slope-intercept form to model this situation, where x represents the number of years since 2010, and y represents the estimated total population of Alberta in millions. Okay, so we're looking through our numbers here, and we're looking for the rate of change and how much we're starting with. Well, here's our key little phrase here, per year. That's telling us that 3 million is the rate of change. Now, since we're told to work in millions, we can represent 3 million by just writing a 3 in our equation. Okay, so our rate of change is 3. And we're starting with 17 million, because they want x to represent the number of years since 2010. So 2010 is like year zero. So our total population y will equal, well, it's 3 million times the number of years since 2010, plus the population in 2010. So y equals 3 times x plus 17. Now, a plumber charges a base fee of $120 plus $90 for each hour of service. Write an equation to model the total charge y for a service call that lasts x hours. All right, so once again, we'll have y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope or the rate of change, and b is the y-intercept or the beginning point. $90 for each hour of service 
key phrase there would be for each hour of service. That's our rate of change. The plumber is adding on $90 for each extra hour of service. So that's our rate of change where y equals 90 times the number of hours plus this fee of $120 that the plumber always charges, no matter how long they stay. So we have y equals 90x plus 120. For an upcoming test, when a student does not study, their predicted score is 57. For each additional hour spent studying, x, the test score, y, increases by 0 0.8. Write an equation that models the situation. We have y equals mx plus b. For each additional hour spent studying, the test score increases by 0 0.8. So that's our rate of change, because that's how much the score is going up for each hour spent studying. So we have y equals 0 0.8 times x, the rate of change times the number of hours, plus the starting point, which is 57. So that's what the predicted score is for a student that doesn't study. So the predicted test score equals 0 0.8 times the number of hours spent studying plus 57. Now let's practice not only writing the models, but also using them. The number of students in Antoine's class, 32, is 11 greater than the number in Frank's class. How many students are in Frank's class? OK, so we, we already know the number of students in Antoine's class is 32. And it says 32 is, or in other words, 32 equals. Let's make a note of that here. 11 greater than the number in Frank's class. OK, well, let's have x be the number in Frank's class. And this 32 is 11 greater than that. So that would be the number in Frank's class plus 11. So the number in Antoine's class is 11 greater than the number in Frank's class. Now we'll go ahead and solve our equation. And we just figured out that Frank's class has 21 people in it. Now the previous question, we might have been able to solve that a little bit easier without an equation. Let's try one here that's probably easier with an equation. The sum of 3 times a number and 7 is 18. Find the number. So we have 3 times a number. The number will be x. So the sum of 3 times a number and 7, so that's what we're adding. So we're adding 3 times a number and 7 is 18. So equals 18. We'll go ahead and solve that for x. Now we get a fraction here. So we'll probably want to double check this. So our number is 11 thirds. If we multiply that by 3 and add 7, we're wondering, do we get 18? Let's see, 3 divided by 3, that's just 1, so those cancel out. So we have 11 plus 7, that does equal 18. So it looks like the number is 11 thirds. Now that probably would have been a pretty difficult number to guess in this case. So sometimes a model is a good way to solve a problem. Finally, we're going to find two consecutive even integers such that 4 times the smaller integer is 68 less than 7 times the larger integer. So first of all, consecutive even integers. Well, examples of those would be like 8 and 10. These are integers because they don't have decimals or fractions or anything in them. They're even numbers, and they're, the 10 is the next even number after 8. So another example would be like 22 and 24. These are consecutive even integers. 24 comes right after 22 if we're only looking at the even integers. OK, let's write a model. So first of all, x, that will just be our first integer. We'll just call that integer 1. So that means that our second integer, since we're working with even integers, is x plus 2. 
Okay, we want four times the smaller integer. So let's just say four times x is 68 less than seven times the larger integer. Well, integer two is our larger integer. So we have seven times the larger integer. But we want 68 less than that. So minus 68. All right, so we have four times the smaller integer is, so there's our equal sign, 68 less than seven times the larger integer. All right, here's our model. Let's go ahead and solve this equation to figure out our two integers. And we get x equals 18, which means that the second integer would be two more than that. So we'd have 18 and 20. All right, so it turns out that 4 times 18 is equal to 7 times 20 minus 68. All right, I hope these examples have been helpful. This is Mr. Ela signing off.